Good morning, it's Kimberly Sherry, International Energy Healer, helping you lead a life of wealth without worry. This morning, I know it's early for most of you on the West Coast, because uh, it is 11-11 here on the East Coast, which is where I'm at, or almost there, <laughs> in uh, New Orleans, uh, here with my sister. We're gonna go explore some haunted houses this afternoon or this evening. And on my way to uh, Miami, where, hey Denise, uh, where, and Lori, where I'll be uh, uh, getting on a cruise out of Miami to the Cayman Islands and to Jamaica uh, to be a speaker on a cruise for uh, former Jehovah's Witnesses. Hey Michael, nice having you here. So uh, today we're, uh, I'm coming to you from New Orleans, and I wanted to talk to you about meditation. And this was inspired by a question that came up the other day, uh, like, how do I meditate? It's a very basic question, but I realized that maybe I need to back up for a change and, and go more basic uh, for some people and, and talk about meditation. Because there's so many meditations out there, and it's touted as the benefit for just about everything. Hey, Timothy. Uh, so meditation is great for any kind of stress, stress-related diseases like high blood pressure, insomnia, any kind of anxiety. And so, you know, a lot of people are encouraging, uh, professionals encouraging their clients to meditate as a way of calming their bodies down, getting quiet so they're not so stressed out. But a lot of people are confused about, like, how do I do it? There's so many different ways to meditate that they don't even know where to start. So I wanted to go over um, just a few things uh, and give you some precautionary notes about meditation. Uh, I'm not an advocate of the kind where you just, you know, close your eyes and blank your mind <clears throat> and think about nothing or just one mantra. Some people can do that. I can't do that. And I can't get completely, like, blank. <laughs> First of all, it doesn't interest me. It sounds totally boring. <laughs> Uh, so I've developed a, a meditation style where I'm directing you through and walking you through a very specific way of clearing your energy, and it's really, really powerful. But there's a few things I want to talk about um, first. So one, uh, there's also, um, I don't know if it's so much a kind of meditation, but it's a way that people meditate that's not so good. <laughs> it's, um, so a lot of people, when they meditate, they will use that as an opportunity to leave their bodies because they're not comfortable in their body. So when they close their eyes, they kind of go out of their body, maybe with just a little string holding, holding on uh, to their bodies, and they'll leave their bodies, and then they feel great because they're not in their body, and then they come back and then will you know, try and cope with their life. That is not the kind of meditation I'm advocate of. I'm an advocate for getting deeply grounded into the earth and being fully present in our bodies, like embodying ourselves fully. In my mind, that's the way that empowered leaders are being called forward is to be fully in their bodies. Our bodies are, are like a tuning fork, and this is where we get all of our answers and information. So if we're not completely in our bodies, we're not gonna be able to hear the messages that are coming in. We're not gonna be able to get those signals that tell us that something's wrong with our body. And so this is, uh, you know, a big maybe change in thinking about how people need to start thinking about meditation, is that it's really a place to come deeply into our body so we can start listening. We can get quiet and we can start to listen and really pay attention to what's going on. So that is, to me, of uh, number one importance is using meditation as a way of getting in our bodies, not out of our bodies. Um, three things I want to address. One is uh, falling asleep during a meditation. Two is the difference between, how do you tell the difference between those voices in your head and what's divine inspiration? And the third thing I want to talk about was um, how do you connect with people that have crossed over? A lot of people like to use meditation for that. So I'm just gonna briefly um, go over these things. So number one, falling asleep. Falling asleep is not a bad thing when you're meditating. A lot of people think, I can't meditate because I fall asleep. 
actually what's happening when you fall asleep is you're releasing unconscious energy. Hey Jesse, oh hey Seuss, uh, nice having you here. So when you're, you're meditating and you fall asleep, that's actually releasing unconscious energy. So that's the energy that keeps us from really accessing our answers and our information. It's kind of like a barrier between us and sometimes our pain. So when we release a lot of this unconscious energy, we start to become more conscious. We start to become more aware of what's going on in here. So it's not a bad thing. I actually think it's a good thing. Uh, so don't be afraid. But you can help yourself a little bit better not fall asleep if you don't meditate laying down. A lot of people like to uh, lay down when they meditate. And I'm an advocate for uh, sitting up in a chair with your feet flat on the ground so that you can really bring up that earth energy coming up through your legs. So a lot of people sit in that lotus position and they're, they're cutting off the energy that's really important that comes through our legs. This is part of how we really get deeply grounded to the earth. So that's what I'm uh, the most advocate for is sitting in a chair with your feet flat on the ground. Um, some people, like my, my mentor, he will meditate standing up and you can't fall asleep. Uh, so he will, he will uh, meditate standing up so you can also do the meditation that I talk about. I'm gonna give you some links the, at the end, free meditations that you can start practicing. And um, you could even practice those standing up if you wanted to. So second, uh, how do I discern the difference between uh, those voices in my head and divine inspiration? Well, first of all, listen to the tone of the voice. If it's unloving, if it's non-supportive, it's, if it's berating you, those are probably those habitual voices that you entertain in your head that keep you thinking you're not enough, you're not doing it right, you're not uh, doing enough. And so that is not divine inspiration. <laughs> those are just uh, bad habits and old programming that you, you keep entertaining. So that is not divine inspiration. Divine inspiration is actually, it is very subtle. So it's sometimes it's hard to tell the difference between just thoughts that come into your head because divine inspiration can sound like that. It can feel like that. It can just sound like another thought in your head. But these, these thoughts are much more supportive. They're much kinder to you. They're much more loving. And so that's one way you can tell the difference. Uh, if you're <clears throat> ever concerned that you're getting information that maybe is not from a good source, like there are dark energies out, you know, out there uh, that we do have to learn how to navigate through. And the best way to not be afraid of those energies is to ask when you get uh, a message or you get information is just to ask is this pure source energy and if you get anything less than a yes then ignore it or disregard it so pure source energy will tell you immediately that yes this is pure source and so this is what we want to pay attention to is pure source divine inspiration the last thing um, how do we connect with people who have crossed over uh, this is also uh, very subtle, uh, or it can be very subtle, a lot like that divine inspiration. It can just feel like other thoughts in our head. And so one is the importance of getting quiet and uh, so that we can sort of calm some of those other voices in our head. And what I've noticed that is oftentimes uh, their face or an image of them will show up in my mind before I hear what they have to say. So notice that uh, as a way of noticing if you're connecting with maybe somebody who's crossed over. Um, there's several <laughs> examples I have um, of that. Hey, Denise, good to have you here. Uh, <clears throat> I do remember, so this is just going back one step about divine inspiration. Uh, one time, uh, this was long ago and it seemed very obvious and it was like spirit was becoming very obvious 
as a way of showing me that I was being guided and directed. And this was before I even left the Jehovah's Witnesses. I remember being upstairs and I was just reading a book, um, a non-Jehovah's Witness book, an inspirational book, self-help book. And I remember uh, it was several things that happened almost simultaneously. Well, first I started smelling this perfume. It was a perfume of like an older lady that, and I was like smelling my clothes and my hair and I, I couldn't find it. And uh, then it happened again and then simultaneously I had this sensation of someone petting my hand and then the thought in my head that said you're doing a good job you're doing a good job and I just broke down in tears because it was just so obvious that that was not the thoughts in my head and it, it spirit had to bring all these other um, senses to kind of wake me up that that this is not just a some thought in your head so that was uh, one very interesting way. I haven't had a spirit so obvious now because maybe I can just listen and hear what they're having to say. Um, but one other thing just happened fairly recently was um, when my aunt died, uh, or she was on her way out. I was, I was helping her leave her body. Hey, Bobby, I'll get to those numbers in a minute. Now you can see why I haven't gotten your numbers yet. Um, so I, I had gotten a message that my um, aunt had had a big stroke and, and she was um they had pulled life support and so she was you know basically on her way out so i basically was helping her um energetically all the way from australia she was in california and helping her energetically you know move and transition out of her body and i remember that when i got up to her heart and i was bringing her out of her heart she started to get very light and kind of humorous. And um, I heard the words in my head, wow, you really know what you're doing. <laughs> and I know those was, that wasn't my thoughts, that was actually her trying, sending me a message. So just so you know that, th those thoughts that are in your head can be spirit already talking to you, but unless you get quiet enough, you're not gonna really know the difference. So pay attention to those subtle voices. And uh, so in review, um, the three things. Falling asleep is not a bad thing. It's just unconscious energy releasing. And two, how to discern between those voices in your head and, and divine inspiration is how loving those voices are, how supportive are those voices. And if you're unsure, just ask, is this pure source energy? And then the third thing, connecting with those of who have crossed over, get really quiet because those messages can be really subtle. So that's what I wanted to talk about today. Uh, and I will be back next week. Let's see, where will I be next week? Oh, I'll be on the cruise ship. <laughs> so I'm not sure how that's going to work out yet. So we, I might have to delay um, next Friday for a day or two, depending on how that works. They said there's Wi-Fi on the boat, but we'll see. Anyway, thank you everyone for joining me today and uh, pay attention to those meditations I'm going to post a link to. You can use those to start practicing over the weekend and see if you can start clearing some of these energies that are keeping you unconscious and unaware of what's going on in your body and what's going on around you. So sending you much love and keep asking my favorite question. How does it get any better than this? And then stay in that blissful question of, I wonder. Sending you much love and we'll see you next week. Namaste.